All right, good evening. Uh, today is July 19, 2022. It is uh, 7 p.m. This meeting of the Hingham Select Board is called to order. First item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. For those willing, please stand and face the flag of our nation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. you take your seats. All right. Next item on the agenda is the approval of minutes. I reviewed the minutes and I'm uh, ready to proceed. Joe, are you ready? I am ready to proceed. Okay, I'll take a motion. I'll take a, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes dated July 12th, 2022. Second, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Next item on the agenda is to consider approval of a special one day wine and malt beverages license to Father Bills in Mainspring for the donor reception to be held at Hingham Shipyard on July 26, 2022 from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. And I believe, is it Tim McDonald here? From, Mr. McDonald, come on up and go to the mic. Welcome. I will, yeah. Go ahead and just uh, state your name and address for the record and tell us about your event if you don't mind. Of course, yep. So my name is Tim McDonald. Uh, I work with Father Bills in Mainspring. My address is 46 Cranberry Lane, Norton, Mass. Um, the event we'll be having is th the same event that we've had uh, for the past few years at the Hingham Shipyard. Um, it will be a donor <coughs> reception. We'll, we'll invite close to 100 people now to gather under a tent behind the Beth, the recently opened uh, restaurant at the sh shipyard there. Uh, we'll gather for two hours, we'll have an open bar out back, and then um, everyone will leave. So just a nice, short, um, quiet time that we're able to kind of thank our donors and appreciate them for all the support they've given us. And you said this was the same event that you had last year? Yes. Yeah, Great. Correct. All right. Fantastic. All right. Let me just ask, um, Michelle, did the uh, police department get a chance to review this uh, application? Yes. Chief Jones reviewed it. He doesn't have any issues. He noted that they'll have a police detail for the event as well as a tented area for the alcohol sales and consumptions and volunteers to ensure that no alcohol leaves the designated area. Great, thank you. Joe, do you have any questions? Yes, um, I note there is not a rain date, uh, so this is fixed, yep. rain or shine. Yep, we've, uh, we've always looked up to Father Bill as he looks over us at the event and he's <laughs> blessed us every year so far, so we cross our fingers and we, uh, we hope for the best. So. That's a powerful benefactor. <laughs> um, and, uh, there's no issue about parking for, for the event? No, nope, we've always been, um, had great partners with the shipyard there. We work with Scott Barisal, the property manager there, and um, we typically will use the movie theater parking lot and that provides ample space. Um, and can you comment on uh, what the restroom facilities will be? Yep, so we'll be utilizing the Beth's facilities. So um, in the past, we still ut uh, utilize that restaurant for right. bathrooms and stuff, but they'll be open this year, so right. a bit of easy, easier access for that. So. You've you've managed a wonderful event. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Anybody from the public have any questions or comments on this application? All right, seeing none, I would make a motion uh, to approve the request for a special one-day wine and malt beverages license to Father Bills in Mainspring for the annual donor reception to be held at Hingham Shipyard on Tuesday, July 26, 2022, from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Good luck with your event. Awesome. Thanks Thank for coming in, Tim. Okay. Before we continue, I do want to note, I neglect to say at the beginning, our colleague Liz Klein, who obviously is absent today, is, uh, is on vacation. So hopefully she's enjoying her vacation. All right, next item on the agenda is to consider approval of the request of Kays Harbor Corporation doing business as Stars on Hingham Harbor, 2 to 4 Otis Street for a change of manager. And I think Bob Nolan. Mr. Nolan, come on up. How are you? I'm well. How are you, sir? Good. Yep. Come up to the microphone and just um, state your name and address and sure. tell us about uh, your request tonight. So, uh, Bob Nolan, I am the beverage director for the Eat Well Group. So, that stars Tosca, Cafe Tosca. I work for Arthur DeCarly and Greg Acera. Uh, our general manager, Megan Langley, did leave, and they just thought it would be easier to have the beverage director's name on the liquor license. So, I'm just here to hopefully get that approved for the restaurant group. I've been in this restaurant business for 
25 years, 26 years, so I just oversee the day-to-day -day operations and bar operations for all three of their restaurants. Great. Yeah. I know I've met you down there a couple times. A couple too, times. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Good to see you again. All right. Um, has the department reviewed this um, request? Do you have any concerns, Michelle? No concerns. Okay. Joe, any questions? No, I, I know part of the application is a Corey request, a Corey review, and I know that's been done. Yep. Um, I also have seen you down there, so uh, I have no further questions. I Thank appreciate you. that. Thank you. All right. Any um, comments or questions for the public? All right. Seeing none. <clears throat> I will make a motion to re approve the request of Kays Harbor Corporation doing business as Stars on Hingham Harbor, 2-4 Otis Street, Hingham, Mass, for a change of manager from Megan Langley to Robert W. Nolan in accordance with the application for change of manager filed with the Town of Hingham on July 7, 2022, subject to the approval of the Alcoholic Beverages Control Commission. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Bob, good to see you again. Thanks so much, right. guys. Good luck. See you soon. You. Good luck. <laughs> All right. Our next item on the agenda is to proclaim August 13th, 2022 as Farmer's Market Day in the town of Hingham. And we, I see Mark Collins in the audience. Mark, good to see you. Come on up. And he wanted to talk about how you're doing this sure. year. And happy to. Yeah. I won't be long. Um, I'm Mark Collins, 44 Spring Street, and uh, I think this is maybe the 15th year that we've come before the select board um, to ask for consideration of naming um, Hingham Farmers Market Day during National Hingham Farmers Market Week. Um, this would be August 13th, and it's a, it's a way to acknowledge the, um, the impact, the importance of farmers markets, not only in the community, but across the uh, Across the nation, um, um, anticipating maybe that just well, I'd like to talk a little bit about what's been going on because it's been um, a yeasty past three years um, with the beginning of COVID when we were uh, asked to leave the bathing beach, which was a very popular site and, and very successful for the market. Um, it was a public safety issue um, at that time. Uh, nobody wanted people gathering together and the, the market's a social issue. We moved to Station Street, um, thinking originally that it might be a temporary location. Uh, we gained a lot of confidence uh, over the course of not only the 2020 season, but uh, last year, the 2021 season, that the Station Street parking lot is the place that the market belongs. And um, we were happy uh, this year to, um, with Art's help and uh, all of your help, to um, uh, sign an agreement to be there for the next uh, three years, or th this year and, and two, uh, two years following. Um, the market, <clears throat> uh, we're still getting um, a few people who come to the market and say, we, didn't, we thought you were at the Bathing Beach, we didn't know you were there. But uh, what has happened is that um, our attendance has grown uh, substantially since the beginning of the year. We know that um, attendance does uh, typically peak and always has peaked in mid-July, but we've been very, very excited about seeing the, uh, the growth and the success of the market at the, um, at the Station Street site. Um, I want to you know, particularly thank uh, the, board, the select board and all of the help that you've got. I, uh, you've given us the health department for the, the, uh, the help that they've given us. Their food inspector um, is, uh, has been wonderful and very much on top of um, any of the issues that uh, farmers markets need. And um, the police department, of course. And a, a little personal shout out to Reuven Levy. Um, we needed a place to store some equipment. Not a lot of equipment, but it's a nuisance, and we've been schlepping it back and forth to private houses uh, by volunteers, and uh, Reuven has uh, offered, and we've been storing uh, uh, the equipment in one of his buildings that's close by, and it's a, it's a nice thing to be able to do. Um, the, uh, one of the things that, that uh, I'd like to just mention, and we have not talked about this before, is uh, the importance to the market and to the community of our SNAP program. Uh, SNAP is the Supplemental Nutritional Assistance Program that replaced food stamps. 
And uh, thanks to a, a, a grant um, from Fruits, Fruit Center Marketplace, um, we are able to supplement SNAP particip uh, participants' uh, allotment, monthly allotment, with a, uh, a matching uh, amount uh, up to $20 per week for, uh, when people come to the market. We're not cheap. It's, we're not stop and shop. And we know that, uh, uh, that the assistance the Fruit Center um, has given us uh, gives us the opportunity and gives participants the opportunity to, to um, uh, make their dollar go a little further. And we like that. Um, the, uh, uh, I just wanted to say one of the, uh, the things that I'd like to uh, perhaps discuss toward the uh, end or after the end of this season when we run every Saturday, just in <laughs> deference to Joe, you've said make a pitch for the market. We're every Saturday from 9 to 1, and we operate until Thanksgiving. Um, so we'd love to see people uh, come down to the parking lot all the way into the cold weather months. Um, but once the season is over, I'd like to come back to the select board and discuss maybe some flexibility in the, the layout that we've got. And we've had two years of operation at, uh, at the site. and. Uh, uh, we think we can, we can make things work even better. So uh, that's it. That's enough for me. It's great. Well, you know, Mark, I, I just want to say that I, I'm <clears throat> so glad that the new locations worked out for you. It's been so well. I mean, the Bathing Beach was a great location, but this is an even better location. Yes, it is. And you know, the the way you you kind of you're, in, you're angled in the parking lot and you're away from any traffic, but pedestrians get in and out. I think it's great. And so happy this, of the success of the market and giving a lot of contribution of that to you. And your leadership. So thank you for all you do it, for it. You know, the biggest problem that that we have with the um, the, the parking lot is um, is a <laughs> is a good one. That parking lot fills up on Friday nights, and as you all know, yeah. it's a busy place. And we put a, a sign down there and said, you know, the farmers market meets here on Saturday mornings, and people have gotten the message. They uh, so the, the the problem has been you find somebody who got another ride home. Uh, and a car is right in the <laughs> right where the eggs go. And, um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, the police department has been very helpful um, uh, trying to locate, in, in the cases that this happens, trying to locate the drivers and get the, the vehicles moved. But also the community has gotten used to it. And we haven't had that problem for a couple of weeks. <laughs> we're, we're really glad. So great. Um, Joe, do you have any questions or comments? Uh, yeah, so Mark, I thought you moved to the Station Street so it was more convenient for me, which is my building's right across <laughs> the street, and it's more convenient for me our too. chair. He's, it's he walking right distance. There. You know, this is the thing. We, we, one of the ancillary benefits of, of moving uh, there is that the market is now closer to downtown Hingham, yep. which is a personal point of interest for me uh, and has been for, for many years. And making it more convenient for people who are doing business and living in the square is a, is yeah. a, is a good I mean, it, I've heard from residents, um, including those who take advantage of SNAP, and they really value the farmer's market. It's, it's, um, it's become a part of Hingham. And so we really appreciate your leadership in, in making this an institution well, that we all respect. We, um, we've, we've, we know of, we feel the support. We feel <laughs> it's just a good place to be on a Saturday, yes. regardless of the weather <laughs> and, and um, what else is going on. It's a place of community, and we can, like that a lot. Can you comment at all about your operations during the winter? Um, yes, the winter operation. Um, I think you probably know. For the last three years, we've we've been at the Wapatuck Visitor Center, yep. which is another um, home run as far as the market is concerned, and uh, we've had wonderful. Uh, cooperation from DCR and the, the staff in Wampatuck uh, to make um, three months we meet for 12 weeks uh, to make that market a, a success and to again bring it's not it's it's yes it's local produce and locally produced um, value-added goods jams and jellies and, and those kinds of things um, but every one of those products is a small business and the opportunity to give those small businesses uh, a venue to generate a revenue stream in the cold weather months um, has been a bonus for us. 
Great. Thank you. Would anybody from the public like to offer any comments or questions about the farmer's market? Okay. Mark, thanks very much. Appreciate it. With that, we're going to read a proclamation into the record. Judd, I'd ask you to take maybe the first four, and then I'll yes. take the last three. <clears throat> Town of Hingham, Massachusetts, proclamation. Whereas His Excellency Governor Charles D. Baker of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts has proclaimed August 7 to 13, 2022, to be Massachusetts Farmers Market Week. And whereas farmers markets are essential to the vitality of Massachusetts farms and are part of the cultural tradition of the Commonwealth. And whereas the Commonwealth is home of 215 summer fall farmers markets which create a festive open air setting which enhances community spirit and civic pride by offering a natural place for community gathering. And whereas farmers markets help heighten public awareness of the agricultural diversity of Massachusetts and the benefits of buying local and preserving open space. And whereas it is befitting for the citizens of Hingham to recognize the continued contribution of farmers markets to local consumers, as well as their positive impact on the economy of the Commonwealth, and whereas Hingham's tradition of its farmers market, now in its 45th season, makes it the third oldest in the Commonwealth. Now, therefore, we, William C. Ramsey, Elizabeth F. Klein, and jo Joseph M. Fisher, Select Board of Hingham, do hereby proclaim August 13th, 2022, to be Hingham Farmers Market Day and urge all citizens to take cognizance of this event and participate fittingly in its observance. Dated this 19th day of July, 2022, signed William C. Ramsey, Joseph M. Fisher, and Elizabeth F. Klein. So, Bill, I'll make the motion then to proclaim August 13, 2022 as Farmer Mar Farmer's Market Day in the town of Hingham. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Mark, thank you very much. Thank and you for being Good here. luck. Thank you. All right. Next item on the agenda is to consider approval of the petition from National Grid to install and maintain approximately 1,350 feet of four-inch gas main in Hobart Street. And I know we have JR. So, JR, why don't you come on up um, and join us up here. Is Mary here? Hi, how are you? Good. If you come up to the mic, Mary, just state your name and introduce yourself. That would be great. Good to see you in person, Mary. We've seen you over Zoom for the last yes. couple of years, all right? So it's good to have you here. Thank you. I'm Mary Mulroney, and I'm here on behalf of National Grid. J.R. Fry, town engineer. Why don't you tell us about your proposal a little bit, Mary? And um, National Grid um, respectfully requests you to grant us a location to relay approximately 1,350 feet of two-inch BS steel dating back to 1928 and 1932 with approximately 1,350 feet of four-inch plastic in Hobart Street from the existing four-inch plastic dating 1996 at number 28 Hobart to the end of the main at 81 Hobart. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about me, about the hours of operation, the length of time you think you'll be uh, engaging in the project, and anything else, anything <coughs> else that might be helpful to the residents who live in that area? Sure. Um, National Grid follows the rules that um, the town of Hingham lays forth for us um, with um, Mr. Fry, Fry at the helm, and we get the police details, and the permit then dictates what our hours of operation are, but that's determined by the town, not by us. As a general rule, those hours of operation are 7 uh, a.m. until uh, 4 p.m. And JR, how, how long how long do you think uh, this project will, will take? And um, I would say uh, for that length of run, um, all said and done, uh, hopefully around a month. About a month. Yeah. And have um, have the will, will the neighbors or the residents be notified either by uh, a mail letter or something on their door to let them know that the work's going to be undertaken? Uh, National Grid is very proactive and does both uh, mailed notifications and uh, door hangers uh, prior to the work. I believe the door hangers are 48 hour notice when they'll be working in front of someone's home. Um, and 
up beyond that, uh, they send out a general kind of mass notification letter that goes to all the abutters. Okay, great, thank you. Joe, do you have any questions? Yeah, um, I'm not sure to whom I would address it. If you could uh, talk about any impacts of noise, dirt, dust on, on the neighborhood. Um, it'll be, you know, standard conditions during construction. Uh, there will be some noise. Most of it is localized, uh, especially when they're digging. Um, once they've uh, completed their excavation, uh, laying in the pipe and backfilling is uh, usually quicker and quieter. Um, but regardless, uh, there is some disruption during the day. And I assume that's also a disruption from a traffic standpoint. Yes, uh, on a street like Hobart, uh, they will usually, uh, they'd have uh, probably, they may get two detail officers, but probably a single detail officer that would uh, direct traffic around the construction area um, as it presents. Okay, and uh, you may have covered this in the documents, but I don't recall seeing it. Is there any blasting associated with the work? Uh, so National Grid generally does not blast at all for any of their main work. Yep. Uh, they will use a hammer if they encounter a significant amount of ledge. Um, and where that occurs, um, we do sometimes get uh, some additional complaints either for noise or uh, other disruptions. Um, and I note in, in some of the documents that it's clear that the work areas will be cleaned at the end of each day so that uh, when people come home from work or around the weekend, it's not... Uh, yeah, they generally try to, uh, and I think are reasonably successful at keeping a fairly tidy workspace. Um, there's always a small amount of stockpiled material that right. they need to keep nearby just for efficiency of operation. Uh, but generally, yes, they do keep a, a neat work site. And in terms of steel plates that are often placed on the roads, mm -hmm. um, what's your anticipation of how long they would be there? Uh, they're supposed to um, contact us if they're going to have a steel plate in overnight. Okay. Um, if they do, they did have some that were a little more extensive related to the Thaxter Street main that uh, they recently completed. And when, they, when those occur, those are supposed to be pinned and ramped right. with asphalt. Um, and if neighbors, residents have concerns, is there a phone number they should call or where would they direct their comments to? Uh, I believe National Grid has a um, hotline, is that correct? Yes, National Grid has a, a, a number, but um, also the foreman on the job mm -hmm. usually gives his phone number out, and anybody, the supervisor, you can contact, like if any of the neighbors have an issue. So the foreman will be there, and if someone has a, an issue, they can... Oh, they can go directly out, yes. Okay. That's not a problem. Great. No, that's that's what we want. Yes. That's good. They're very good like yeah. that, yes. honestly. Thanks. That's all I have. Great. Anybody from the public have any questions or comments on this application? Sure. Why don't you come on up to the microphone? Just, uh, Mayor, if you could kind of yeah, sure. sit there just in case you might be able to answer the question. Uh, Sir, if you could just state your name and address for the record and um, let us know what your question is. Uh, you know. John Stoddard, 51 Hobart Street. Um, I'm wondering if any of these cross trenches at the end of the day are going to be filled with asphalt when they patch at the end of the day? Are they going to be dirt left open? So generally their practice has been to patch at the end of the week. Um, and then that's the primary patch or, or the, the initial patch. Uh, it's a temporary in nature. Then they'll come back after there's been, uh, after they com in this case, after they complete the main work and they will do a uh, finish patch on that and basically mill out the trench and then uh, place new asphalt in. So at the end of the day, there will be maybe a dirt trench? There may be a dirt trench at the end of the day. Okay. It'll be up to grade, so there won't be, there should not be any depression that would be, uh, that you'd observe, uh, but it, there may be a little bit of dust generated. Okay. Is that a, isn't it a highway thing that if you don't leave a trench open, you have to fill it with asphalt at the end of the day? 
uh, not necessarily asphalt, um, or if it is a highway thing, then you're then you're specifically speaking of high speed freeways as opposed to a residential street. Well, I mean the highway department in general. Um, we do our best to uh, to uh, fill all of our excavations in, uh, but in any kind of utility main work, um, it is not a uh, it's not the same type of construction as going out to do a specific repair or um, an activity that's very localized. And so because of that, we generally uh, provide that it's okay to bring the trench back up to grade. And then at the end of the week, they come in and pave it off. Okay. Great. Thank you. John, thank you. Anybody else have any questions or comments? Sir, come on up. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you could state your name and the address for the sure. record. Uh, my name is Jeff Morrow. I live at 30 Hobart. Um, just question, uh, how wide is the ex excavation uh, expected to be and will it extend into either private property or front lawns and things like that? And if it does, who is responsible for the cleanup and the replacement of grass and things like that? Yes, great question. So uh, total <coughs> trench width um, is, if provided they don't encounter any significant obstructions, is usually about three feet wide. Um, it will extend um, into what most people consider private property. It'll extend when they do the service connections. If it is necessary to replace a service, and I suspect that based on the age of the main, that will be necessary in several cases, uh, then what they'll be doing is they will replace the service as um, all the way to the meter. Is that correct, Mary? Yes. So they'll replace the service all the way to the meter. In all cases, uh, National Grid is responsible for restoring um, anything that they disturb to an equivalent condition, uh, although generally that is kind of a loam and seed in the case of lawns. And, and just a comment on the project, if I may. Sure, of course. Uh, living at 30 Hobart, I've probably notified National Grid maybe half a dozen times over the last few years regarding the smell of gas uh, and leaks uh, in the neighborhood in front of the house. Uh, I know on at least three occasions they've come out and, and patched the area in front of my home, uh, only for the smell of gas to return a short time later. Um, they've indicated that it has a lot to do uh, with the, uh, the shape of the pipe and, and, and the condition that it's in and the problems uh, that that causes. Um, you know, my concern is one of safety and, and one of reliability uh, of service. Um, and I think if fixing this or replacing this main can fix that problem, uh, I think we'd all be better off on that street. So I, I would urge you to, to approve if that's the case. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mary, I'm assuming that the project is intended to address those issues that, okay. Um, okay. Anybody else? Ma'am, come on up. Eileen Cutler, 36 Hobart Street. First, I want to thank the National Grid for making this a priority. It's been three years of hell, uh, living with the smell, living with trees dying and falling down, and living with my grass <coughs> dying. It's just been awful. Um, I'm wondering about the potential leaching into the water supply as this, <coughs> as this is taking place, um, the water lines, any disruption to the water lines? Uh, no, they, um, so as a common practice now <coughs> is to maintain uh, separation and National Grid for all of their gas mains is actually required to, by law, maintain uh, a minimum of two feet separation from um, any other utility and then uh, the standard practice, standard industry practice is to maintain a minimum of four feet separation where they encounter other utilities. Um, 
if there's any damage to that utility, they're required to contact the utility owner. Um, and with most of the remaining utilities being town owned, uh, we're able to respond reasonably quickly. Um, the same way that National Grid is able to respond when uh, one of our contractors or one of our uh, employees uh, impacts one of their lines. JF, right? I'm sorry. Yeah. So I'm not sure I understood what your response is on the leaching issue. Is, um, is, is there a risk of that occurring? So it's a, what we're dealing with is a gas. So it will release to atmosphere and um, it will, it doesn't enter the water table per se. It just okay. becomes a component of the air we breathe and, and a very small component of that. And then um, I'm just concerned about if, if something happens to the water line that comes into our homes, who then is responsible for any disruption or problem that seems so the might take place? If the water service were impacted and, uh, the, and the line breaks, if, the, if your service line breaks, then National Grid would do their part to immediately shut off where the break is, and if they're able to at that t that time, they'll initiate a repair, or we are river water surface will come out and complete a repair, so, so that you'd have very minimal disruption, and also minimal cost is what I'm thinking about. If they damage your service, uh, then National Grid is responsible to cover those costs. Okay, thank you very much, and again, my thanks to all of you. You have no idea how happy I am. Thank you. Anyone else? Come on up. great. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Lauren Higgins. I'm at 29 Hobart Street. <clears throat> it's Hobart Street. And my question is a follow-up to Jeff's question, which is if they have to replace it close to the meter, when will the homeowner be notified? in terms of managing that. I have a couple young children and nannies in and out of the house and yeah. some right. construction so and they I just want to try make to plans. notify if there has to be a temporary shutdown, yeah. then they try to notify you the day before. Okay. And there's usually a uh, I'll call it brief 3 to 4 hour window that you might lose service, but then they'll come in uh, once that work is complete, they come in and they'll make sure all your pilot lights are back on and make sure service is properly restored. Okay, and so they'll notify you by just knocking on the door, so presumably if someone's not home on that day. They'd leave a door knocker or they, um, or a card with their number okay. on it. Okay, thank you, and agreed. We moved in a couple years ago and the smell has been very persistent, so I am very happy that this project is on the docket. And okay. I look forward to having it fixed. <laughs> thank you. Did you have a comment? Come on up, yeah. Liz Stoddard, 51 Hobart Street as well. <laughs> um, we, our house is on the corner of Hobart and Smith, and in the diagram that we were sent, there are um, four bubbles there saying that there's gonna be test site um, right there. Mm -hmm. And I was just wondering what that means and if there's a risk of leakage. Uh, no, there's no <laughs> risk of anything. What, yeah. that, what those are is those are test leads that they can um, attach their testing equipment to. And they'll generally, I believe what they do is they run a current through it to identify um, the quality of the pipe. So it's a, it provides uh, a direct physical test of all of the new pipe that they're putting in to make sure that um, it's in good working order going forward. So it's tested periodically or? Yes, as part, as part of their um, regulatory requirements through the federal government, these are the kinds of, uh, this is the kind of testing regimen that they're now required to do. And it um, provides, it gives them the ability to be a little bit more proactive uh, than what appears to be the case on your street where uh, the pipe has degraded to such a degree that it's a regular uh, nuisance. Right. Okay. Just wanted to make sure it wouldn't be a risk of leakage because we 
<laughs> right. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, seeing none. I am prepared to make a motion. Go ahead. I move to approve the request of National Grid to install and maintain approximately 1,350 feet of four inch gas main in Hobart Street. The gas main in Hobart Street will originate at 29 Hobart Street, connecting into the existing four inch gas main and continuing southerly in Hobart Street to the limit of work at 81 Hobart Street. This gas main will replace existing two inch bare steel main 1928 and 1932 respectively. The age of the abandoned main is between 90 and 94 years old. This approval is subject to the stipulations of the Department of Public Works as outlined in the letter dated June 28, 2022. Now second that motion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. All right. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. All right, uh, Mary, come on back up. You have another item. We have a couple, couple other items on the agenda. Next item is to consider approval of the petition from National Grid to install and maintain approximately 1,410 feet of 12-inch gas main in Summer Street. So, Mary, want to tell us about this uh, this application? This is long. So, National Grid recommends the relay of approximately 20 feet of one inch plastic dating 1985 and approximately 1,250 feet of two inch plastic dating 1985 and approximately 545 feet of three inch dated 1985 with approximately a total of 1,815 feet of four inch plastic in Tucker's Lane from the existing four-inch coated steel oh. in Beale Street. Hold on, Mayor, um, I, think, I think that's the next one. This, next this one is for Summer Street. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. We'll just flip them around. Okay. Thank you. No Sorry. Problem. I heard Tucker's Lane, and I remember that's, okay. that's the next one. This is good. Yeah. This is a short one. I won't put everyone to sleep. Um, this one is National Grid respectfully requests um, you to grant of location a relay approximately 1,000 110 feet of six yes, inch bare steel and 300 feet of six inch plastic main with a total of 1,410 feet of 12 inch plastic in Summer Street from the existing 12 inch coated steel critical main in Rockland Street connecting to the eight inch plastic parallel main to the railroad crossing. Jay, you want anything? Uh, no, I believe that um, while some of uh, some of this main is older, um, I believe this is uh, also a significant um, resiliency improvement. So it's they're increasing the size of their their capacity uh, pretty significantly. Um, it's also a benefit to the town in that they'll be getting this work in ahead of. Um, our Route 3A work, which they do touch the intersection that we'll be going through um, in the future. And uh, similar to the, um, the questions I had with the last application, so you don't start before 7 in the morning, is that correct? Correct. And you're going to notify all the residents with either a door flyer or some sort of certified mail? With both. Both. Yes. both. Great. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Um, so Summer Street's obviously a pretty busy street in summertime with everybody going down toward the beach. Um, when do you intend to start the project? How long do you think it's going to let and take to complete? Well, um, we would defer to when um, you suggest that we start, but probably. So it depends on the crew that they have slated, but they are just now beginning a very significant project in Wampatuck Road, um, a very lengthy project that might take them through the end of the summer. Um, and it would, and if it's the same crew, then at that point, uh, they'd have the ability to move over to either Summer Street or Hobart Street, um, or the uh, complex off Beale Street, the condominium complex that we'll be talking about in a few moments. Um, we could make a recommendation to have this one begin in September or later and formalize that. 
Well, I mean, I would defer to you, but I, I, did, I know that street is certainly pretty busy in summertime. A lot of, a lot of traffic coming out of the rotary going up toward Hall, right? So. Well, oh, this so this is a separate part of Summer Street. It's the segment that uh, turns off of the road to Hall and goes down to the railroad crossing oh, it's, oh, it's approaching it. 3A. It. Yeah. So it's a little more residential and uh, definitely less traffic, uh, but probably still busy. Understood. Thank you. Any questions? Do you need um, or have you gotten permission from the state? Could, does this go up to the Greenbush uh, rail line? Uh, they stay outside the impacted uh, right away for the MBTA. So when they put in that eight inch line that crosses the uh, level crossing, right. um, they kept that outside of the permitted limits so that they wouldn't have to go back for another permit okay. on either side. Um, and the same questions that I asked before in terms of noise, dirt, traffic, blasting, things like that. So uh, there should be no blasting. Um, there will be some noise. Uh, sure. Typically, typical for construction sites, um, dust it, where it becomes a problem, uh, we can direct them to implement dust control <coughs> measures. Um, but generally, uh, yes, it's okay. should should not be too disruptive as things go. Great. No other questions. Thank you. Anybody in public have any questions or comments? Come on to the mic. How are you? My name is Rosemary Conroy. I live at 179 Summer Street. Um, and my, I, I, most of the questions have sort of been answered, but I'm sort of a safety bug. I'm always very afraid of gas and explosions. Can you sort of uh, tell us that, you know, kind of try to assure that we're not going to have any those kind Surprises? of Surprises? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. The, uh, this is very safe work. Um, that these construction workers do on a daily basis and they've been doing it around Hingham quite extensively uh, recently uh, as National Grid works to improve their mains. So um, the entire first section of their work is actually uh, completely absent of any gas. They're just laying dry main. Okay. And then once they've got the entire main in, uh, then they g move into a uh, where they can gas up that, that section of main. And once they're able to gas that section of main up, then it's just connecting the services over from the old main to the new main and disconnecting them and disconnecting them from the old main. So it's a um, the periods of time that they're operating with live gas are, very focused and uh, not of long duration at any particular time. Okay. So there's not a lot of, there's not the ability for a significant release of gas or anything like that. It's uh, relatively brief as they make those connections. Okay. I have one final question and that is I, I understand um, that the mains for some of the utilities that come into a property, it's the property owner's responsibility for the main going from their house to the street. Is that true with the gas lines? I believe uh, National Grid owns the gas line from the meter to the street. Okay. And then your, you, you and, and your plumber are responsible for uh, the interior of the home. Okay, great. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? No, I'm just taking okay. All right. With that then, um, I would make a motion to approve the request of National Grid to install and maintain approximately 1,410 feet of 12-inch gas main in Summer Street. The gas main in Summer Street will originate at the intersection of Summer Street and Rockland Street, connecting into the existing 12-inch gas main and continuing south-southeasterly in Summer Street to the limit of work on the north side of the Greenbush level crossing. The gas main will replace existing six inch bare steel and plastic main, 1930 and 1991 respectively. The age of the abandoned main is between 31 and 92 years old. This approval is subject to the stipulations of the Department of Public Works 
as outlined in the letter dated June 28, 2022. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. All right. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is to consider approval of the petition from National Grid to install and maintain approximately 42 feet of four inch gas main crossing Beale Street entering Hockley Drive and approximately 100 feet of four inch gas main and Fotler Road crossing Beale Street and entering Tucker's Lane. Okay, Mary, go ahead. Okay. Um so I have a, a, a longer, more detailed um, description if you want to hear it. So National Grid recommends the relay of approximately 20 feet of one inch plastic dating back to 1985 and approximately 1,250 feet of two inch plastic dating back to 1985 and approximately 545 feet of three inch dating back to 1985 with approximately 1,815 feet of four inch plastic in Tucker's Lane from the existing four inch coated steel in Bill Street to the end of Maine at 3803 Tucker Lane. Approximately 120 feet of two inch plastic dating back to 1986 and approximately 1,400 feet of three inch plastic dating back to 1986 with approximately 1,520 feet of four inch plastic in Hockley Drive from the existing four inch coated steel in Beale Street to Tucker's Lane. And we place approximately 125 feet of one inch and 655 feet of two inch plastic with approximately 780 feet of two inch plastic from 1106 Tucker's Lane running around the back of number 406, 307, and 207 Tucker's Lane. And then approximately 390 feet of one inch plastic with approximately 390 feet of two inch plastic from 406 Tucker's Lane running around the back of 504 and 104 Tucker's Lane. Approximately 685 feet of one inch and 335 feet of two inch plastic with approximately 1,020 feet of two inch plastic from number 3402 Tucker's Lane to the rear of 1601, 1503, and 1406 Tucker's Lane. Approximately 220 feet of one inch and 675 feet of two inch plastic with approximately 890 feet of two inch plastic from the intersection of Tucker's Lane and Hockley Drive to the end of 705 Tucker's Lane, continuing to the rear of 603 Tucker's Lane and a branch running to the rear of 1105 Tucker's Lane. We place 210 feet of one inch plastic with 210 feet of two inch plastic from Tucker's Lane to 901 Tucker's Lane, approximately 210 feet, this is all the individual services, 210 feet of one inch plastic with approximately 210 feet of two inch plastic at 1301 Tucker's, 275 um, feet of one inch plastic with approximately 275 feet of two inch plastic um, from Tucker's Lane to the rear of 1203 Tucker's Lane. Approximately 420 feet of one inch plastic with approximately 420 feet of two inch plastic from Tucker's Lane along the rear of 3207 Tucker's Lane. And then the rear of 3307 Tucker's Lane. And then approximately 720 feet of one inch plastic with approximately 720 feet of two inch plastic from Tucker's Lane to the rear of 3602, 3501, and 3406 Tucker's Lane. Approximately 420 feet of one inch plastic with 420 feet of two inch plastic from Tucker's Lane to the rear of 3803 and 3707 Tucker's Lane. Approximately 675 feet of one inch plastic with approximately 675 feet of two inch plastic from Hockley Drive to the rear of 2207 Hockley Drive and then along the parking lot to the rear of 3107 Hockley Drive. And then approximately 600 feet of two inch plastic with approximately 600 feet of two inch plastic from Hockley Drive to the rear of 2303, 2802, and 2904 Hockley Drive and then approximately 200 feet of two inch plastic, replacing it with 205 feet of two inch plastic from 
Hockley Drive to the rear of 2407, approximately 250 feet of two inch plastic with approximately 250 feet of two inch plastic from Hockley Drive to the rear of 2506 Hockley Drive and approximately 450 feet of one inch plastic with approximately 450 feet of two inch plastic from Hockley Drive to the rear of 2301 and 2402 Hockley Drive. And then approximately 500 feet of one inch plastic, approximately 500 feet of two inch plastic from Hockley Drive to the rear of 2905 and 2102 Hockley Drive. And approximately 950 feet of one inch plastic with approximately 950 feet of two inch plastic from Hockley Drive to the rear of uh, number 2007 Hockley Drive. Then around the parking lot to the rear of 1703 1801 and 1901 Hockley Drive to relay approximately 1,350 feet of two inch BS steel dating back to 1928 and 1932 with approximately 1,350 feet of four inch plastic in Hobart Street from the existing four inch plastic dating back to 1996 at 28 Hobart Street to the end of the main at 81 Hobart. Uh, uh, is, are you sure that's right? That, is he sure it's Hobart Street? Mm, I, yeah, I think. Uh, oh, maybe it's not. No, I think it would probably be Beale Street. Okay, maybe, yeah. Right? That's Beale Street. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a typo that got carried through. Yeah. Okay, so let's just make, just make sure the typo's uh, correct. Changed, yes. Yeah, on the application. I yeah. will. Yeah, Hobart Street was the, was the first application we heard. Okay. Chair, do you want to add anything? Well, just... Um, Obviously, it is a very extensive project, but the vast majority of it is on private property. And so uh, the select board is not concerned with the private side of it. Sorry. And we are, um, and so that's why our lengths are really um, just uh, to get us from their connection point within the public right of way into the private property. But it's great because it does give us an opportunity and it gives National Grid an opportunity to address the public in a public hearing and address any, the same kinds of concerns that we've been hearing from all the residents. Okay. And uh, just technical question, JR. So is the four inch gas main now recommended? I know that it looks like one, one of the changes that you're, you're changing the three and two inch gas pipes out and you're replacing the four inch, is four inch now the standard? So the, they, what they're doing is they're replacing based on the demand that they're seeing. And so my suspicion would be that more and more of the um, residences within that development have shifted to gas um, utilities it, so whether it's for their uh, stovetop and oven, uh, as well as heat, uh, hot water, and because they're seeing in the increased demand, it requires the larger pipe size in order to consistently provide the, the pressure and flow needed. Thank you. Joe, do you have any questions? Um, I will not make you read this again. Um, <laughs> no, I think it's it was very complete, and I understand that uh, a lot of the work is going to be done on, on the private property, presumably through the easements that National Grid has. Yes. Um, and um, it looks like to the extent that there is one inch plastic, it's being replaced by two inch plastic. It seems to be the general rule. Yeah. Um, so um, it seemed you, you really addressed all of my concerns in the prior applications, so I'm good. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the public? Sir, come on up if you could just uh, state your name and address for the record. Sure. Derek Wadman, Buckley Drive, in the uh, community there, in the woods. Um, I can't believe I'm the only person here. <laughs> um, not really prepared for this, but the, the conversation that I've just heard, or the details, are vastly more uh, intricate and in scope than that letter that was sent out by the, the town inviting us to this meeting. It just spoke about some four inch mains and uh, some two inch pipe here and there, 
running down Hockley Drive and connection with Beale Street, all, all of this other stuff is, is incredible. And I'm, as I say, I'm not really prepared for this, but um, what I'm taking away from this is, first of all, there's a general feeling that yeah, Hingham Woods is private property, so that's their problem kind of thing, which it isn't, right? <laughs> and the, the, the gas people are only dealing with the mains that are coming down the streets and there's going to be other contractors involved in the two inch and one inch pipes and everything that feed off that mains into the various um, blocks either on Tucker's Lane or on my my lane. Um, so, so there's we were all under the well, I say we the, the my neighbours and people I did have spoken to were all under the impression that this was just a, a simple down the road uh, you know, construction job or, or installation job but it's, it's far, far more than that. Um, I, was, I was expecting to see some kind of maps and some idea as to where this fits in with the rest of the converse, I'm sorry I was late but the, what conversation I did hear about the other projects that are, you know, we, we're all trying to uh, weld into, um, I was kind of expecting to see some information that I could take away and say to my neighbours, don't, don't worry about it, you know, this is this, this is that, but I, um, everything at the moment is just hearsay. Um, so is there, are there any details, more, you know, m details that people could understand other than what I've heard this, this evening, you know, two inch there, one inch here? And so the, the big takeaway that you can take back and take to your neighbors as well is that they are replacing the entire uh, natural gas network that serves your community, all of it. So they're going from the connection point in Beale Street at uh, Tucker mm -hmm. to the connection point in Beale Street in Hockley. Right. And everything in between right up to the building is going to be replaced. By? By National Grid's by contractor. National, by their, by, by their one contract. single contractor. So there is one, uh, if I get you right, there's, there's just one contractor who's in charge. Of, he's the general contractor. He's in charge of everything. If any of this work is subbed out, it's it's still it's still um, you know. For the most covered. part, they haven't subbed any work out. They have had two contractors working in town. Uh, the only element that a contractor may uh, it's not really a sub, but. Um, one of the contractors doesn't have their own paving equipment or their own uh, paving okay, plant, yeah. and so they have to purchase their asphalt separately. Uh, the other contractor has their own asphalt plant, so they just bring their own trucks in for that portion of it. But that's really the extent of, uh, it, there's not multiple contractors working on your site. Um, I think you are aware, obviously, that we had planned to resurface the the roads in uh, in that development there, and we've had to put that off because of the uh, you know national grid and uh, the, the gas work that's involved. Listening to a couple of the other projects, it seems that we're all vying for some kind of immediacy. Who's going to get here first? Do we have any idea of where? we are or anybody else's in the pecking order of, of uh, you know, a schedule for, for all of this work? I so mean, as, a, as a general rule, um, the town doesn't dictate the priority to National Grid, but National Grid is very responsive in taking uh, our, con our concerns into account. Um, now, and, and to that point, we've already kind of mentioned that we've 
will most likely request that Summer Street be delayed. The Summer Street work would actually be delayed um, such that it wouldn't impact uh, any summertime travel. So that might be an incentive for National Grid at that point to uh, push forward. And I know that they are actually fairly um, eager to begin that work regardless. So I think, I believe your neighborhood was their priority to begin with. It is. Okay. It, it was? It is. It is, okay. It is. Let's, yeah, if you're going to talk, we have to talk to the mic, so oh, people, if you want to. Yeah. No, just go back up to the I'm mic sorry. so people sorry. can hear. That's okay. No, that way people can hear you. Oh, okay. um, yeah. No, no, you're welcome to speak. No, you're welcome to speak. Yeah. I just like to have oh, you do oh, it on the sorry. mic so that so it can be it can, people at home. You can, can share the mic. Yeah, so yes. go ahead, Mayor. Yes, so N National Grid is making this a priority. They're looking for the grant because the contractor that, that, that's doing the resurfacing for your development is kind enough to wait for us. So they are anxious to get in there and get this done so your streets can be paved. And then, you know, we, no one will be in the streets after. Okay, so they'll, they'll, they'll deal with the, main, the mains in the street and then all these little taps that go up to the various buildings, buildings yes. that'll take place. That has to still take place before the surface is right. done. Okay, I'm saying, why don't you return to the mic if you're going to ask a question? Yeah. So, let's <laughs> speak, let's speak, let's speak into the mic. Yeah. The chair. Okay. Okay, I'm just ahead. saying that if if the mains is laid in in you know in Hockley Drive itself, um, we still can't pave the road until all of those taps are taken off to the building, right? Whether they're two inch right. or one. Yeah. yeah they're not going to so they're not going to pave until all of that work is complete. Uh, so at this point, the sooner that National Grid can get in there, then the better opportunity they'll have to turn the street over uh, a completed with the completed utility work turn that street over to your paving company okay and at that point will all of the gas work will be complete or they will still be working on tapping into the various buildings with their one inch two inch uh, i'm not sure about their order of work uh, I, they could do it that way that they could do it such that they just get all the mains in and get stubs off to, out towards each building. Right. Um, and then invite the paving contractor in to take care of the paving. Okay, that's... Um, they may choose to try and complete all of the work, um, although it is fairly substantial. Um, and, I'm, and I don't know that uh, it's a big it's a big project i don't know that you'd get it done this year okay that, that was my uh, last uh, question um this this is more than just six months of, of work this is a this is probably a year's worth of work when you think of the length of tucker lane and uh hockley road and all of the taps or stubs as you, as you mm -hmm. call them um this is a big project. Are we are we going to have more information for the 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 um, Hingham Woods Condiment Association? We have a clubhouse, and we normally get somebody such as yourselves, or you know whether it's uh, the electrical people or whatever, come and give us a, a presentation to us specifically for our project. Is that something that's in the works? Because I know a lot of people are just thinking, oh, don't worry about it. This is, all they're going to do is dig up the road at the end of uh, uh, Hockley Drive or Tucker's Lane and Beale Street and uh, put a couple of steel plates down while they're you know, doing this, that, and the other, and it's all done in a couple of months. This is, <laughs> I'm spellbound by, uh, by what I've heard. I mean, I think in terms of an, any follow-up questions, you can email JR. Or it's not case email of follow-up questions. I'm, what I'm ask. asking is, we need, we, I'm requesting on behalf of everybody that we, that we have a proper presentation at, uh, at Hingham Woods uh, you know, Condominium Association. 
I mean, we, 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 no sorry. we, I mean, we normally do, and, that, and on this occasion, <coughs> from what I've heard. If, if I could take your contact information and I could uh, reach out to the community affairs people, and maybe they could schedule a meeting or meet with you and a few of your neighbors and go over the road. Um, well, it's more, it's more than that. If you contact Linda O'Connor, she's the property manager, she would, she, she would set up a date with, your, with yourselves and advertise and uh, note to everybody else that you know, this is what's going to happen. We're having a meeting tonight to discuss this. And then we, everybody would have a much better idea well, I'm sure that Linda already knows this work. Oh, yes. Yeah. She, yeah she's, she's familiar with it, but I'm not sure that she, uh, you, any of you folks have approached her with regards to having a, uh, her own meeting to discuss this project. Oh, they probably reviewed it with her because they've already reviewed it with the paving contractor. That's why... He's to, he's not. I'm not saying he pulled out, but he delayed going in right, because yeah. he's waiting for us. So this is extremely so my important. Should be, should be addressed to Linda then as to what she's doing to set up a, Yours, a, a, yes. a, a presentation. Yes, because she has all the contacts at National <coughs> Grid. Okay. So you, you could ask her, but I, I'm being honest. I don't think your paving's going to be done this year. I think it will probably be this spring. I'm just, which is well, kind well of a good thing. Uh, yeah, if, if that's the paving, then that's okay. That means that the, the National Grid are going to be doing their work summer through to the fall. As soon as we are, if we're allowed the grant, and if um, the engineer decides to give us the permit, then we will go in and work it and try to get it. Okay. Uh, sorry, I wasn't really prepared for the meeting. No problem. I appreciate you coming in. Yeah, it's good questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. With that, I'll take a motion. I move to approve the request of National Grid to install and maintain approximately 42 feet of four-inch gas main crossing Beale Street, entering Hockley Drive, and approximately 100 feet of four-inch gas main in Fotler Road, crossing Beale Street, and entering Tucker's Lane. And are there, do we need to change any of the roads here? No, it's, it's Hockley, Tucker's. I think we're good. Okay. I didn't, yeah. Additionally, mains will be installed within the private ways of Tucker's Lane and Hockley Drive and on private property serving the Hingham Woods subdivision. The gas main in Fotler Road will originate at the intersection with Beale Street, connecting into the existing four-inch gas main and continuing southerly across Beale Street and entering Tucker's Lane a private way. The gas main in Beale Street will originate at the intersection with Hockley Drive, crossing Beale Street and entering Hockley Drive a private way. These gas mains will replace existing three inch Aldo A plastic 1985 and three two and one inch Aldo A plastic 1985 within the private ways and private property. The age of these abandoned mains is 37 years old. This approval is subject to the stipulations of the Department of Public Works as outlined in the letter dated June 28th, 2022. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Mary, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks for your presentations this evening. Thank you very much. Have a great summer. You too. You too. Thank you. JR, JR, thank you as well. Oh, yeah. Next, next item on the agenda is appointments, and we do have a couple appointments for consideration this evening. Uh, I'd like uh, to move to appoint William Keogh to the 4th of July Parade Committee for a one-year term ending June 30th, 2021. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. And I'd make a motion to appoint Janine Shiseki as a GAR Hall trustee for a three-year term ending June 30th, 2025. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Excuse me, Bill. I think it's supposed to say 2024. Oh. Am I doing that math right? So 30 years. No, 2022, 23, It's a three-year three three term. Three My bad. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. But thank you for, okay. thank you for catching. Okay. Right, Joe, um, one more? And well, actually, let's go back to the first one, because I read it for a oh, one-year yeah. term, term ending June 30th, 2021. That would not be So that be should good. be 23. That, that no. should be uh, 2023. So... I will revise that uh, 
motion there. Okay. So the motion has been revised to a th for, for William P. O. For William. Fourth of July okay. parade for one year term ending June thirtieth, twenty twenty three. And I would second that motion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. And um, the G. Arrow Hall trustee appointment was That's made, good. seconded, and voted on. So one more. So I'll move to appoint Jill Session. Is that how you pronounce her name? Setian. Yeah. Setian uh, to the Veterans Council for a three-year term ending June 30, 2025. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. All right. Next item on the agenda is public comment. Not seeing anyone in the um, room this evening. I'm going to move on to the last item on the agenda, which is Town Administrator Select Board Reports. So, Michelle, do you want to start this evening? Nothing this evening. Thank you. <clears throat> Hart? I just have uh, two items. Sure. Uh, first, I just want to note that today we had the opportunity alongside the town staff, alongside the Commission on Disability to conduct an informal ribbon cutting at the uh, new handicapped space on Main Street, uh, opposite 6 to 8 Main. Uh, it was a great opportunity to highlight uh, the, the collaboration between the Commission, the town staff here in Town Hall, particularly the work of the DPW to get the work done. So we're very pleased with that. And second, I just want to uh, remind folks that uh, the town does have a, a supply of rapid antigen test kits for COVID-19 available here at Town Hall in the Senior Center as well as at the, the police station. And uh, we encourage uh, residents to take advantage of those. Thank you. Any questions? No. All right, thank you. All right, next move All on right. to select board reports. Uh, Joe. Um, no reports, but really a question in, in light of the... Uh, high heat that we're experiencing? Are there any uh, special facilities that the town is making available to residents, either at the senior center, library, or elsewhere, uh, so that folks know where to go if they need to go? Yes, and I think Art worked on the messaging today, but the senior center, the library, and the country club were the, were the places that we were directing folks in case they need to cool off, and Art may want to add anything additional. Well, that's that's the long and short of it. We did, it, we did uh, prepare a release that's posted on the website and uh, is a news flash that we pushed out to the public. Just to let them know that those facilities are available during uh, regular operating hours, as well as some tips on how to handle the heat. Great, thank you, that's it, thank you. And la lastly, I'm gonna close this evening by mentioning um, the community's response last evening and today to uh, the death of Marine Corps <coughs> Sergeant Matthew Patrika. Um, I would note that, you know, as many know, I've been in the military for 23 years and served in both Iraq and Afghanistan, and I had um, many of my uh, brothers and sisters killed in combat in those two conflicts and also were killed in training accidents. And to see our community come out in such a tremendous uh, show of support last night um, was, was, was wonderful. I want to thank uh, Keith and uh, the Veterans Services Department. I uh, want to thank Janine for her continuing um, to update people. Everybody on social media in town that kept giving updates to uh, the town about um, Sergeant Patrika's arrival in town. And then lastly, just the, just the hundreds of people who came out last night along uh, the route, uh, particularly Main Street, Gardner Street, all the way to Downey Funeral Home. Um, having known families who've lost service members, I can tell you, I'm sure it meant um, the world to the Patrika family. And I just want to thank the community for showing uh, just how great it is last night. So with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Have a good week, everybody. Thank you.